Okay, well, let's turn to Matthew 21 then. and watched as Jesus uh, entered Jerusalem last week and the people said, man, who is this? <laughs> Amen. Let's turn to Mark chapter 11 and read Mark's uh, rendering of Jesus writing into the town. And uh, Mark 11, 1, it says, And when they came nigh to Jerusalem unto Bethphage, in Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent forth two of his disciples and saith unto them, Go your way into the village over against you, and as soon as ye enter into it, you shall find a colt tied whereon never man sat. Loose him and bring him. And if any man say unto you, Why do ye this? Say ye that the Lord hath need of him, and straightway he will send him hither. And they went their way and found the colt tied by the door without in a place where two ways met. And they loose him, and certain of them that stood there said unto them, What do ye loosing the colt? And they said unto them, Even as Jesus had commanded, and they let, him, let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus, and cast their garments on him. And he sat upon him, and many spread their garments in the way, and others cut down branches off the trees, and strawed them in the way. And they that went before, and they that followed, cried, saying, Hosanna! Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the kingdom of our father David that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And Jesus entered into Jerusalem and into the temple. And when he had looked around about all things, about upon all things, and now the eventide was come, he went out unto Bethany with the twelve. So uh, it's interesting that even in John chapter 2, the Bible speaks of how when Jesus was starting his ministry, right. that it was Passover time, right? Passover time. And that Jesus, sure enough, first thing he did in John chapter 2 is he cleansed the temple. He found again these money changers were, changers were there. And so uh, he found it necessary when he began his ministry and now it's at the end of his ministry, and he finds they're still there. <laughs> the devils won't go away. And so uh, he needed to cleanse the temple again. And, of course, we know it's coming on the Passover again. Uh, so sure enough, as the people start coming in there from all around the world to celebrate Passover, uh, Jesus will be crucified by them and stretched out there as God's true Passover lamb. And he will die so that his blood can wash away all of our sins, amen. And no longer will men need the blood of a lamb. And so in Matthew 21 now, we're going to pick up the narrative. We've uh, looked at this passage. We looked some at how the people were singing Hosanna there, verse 9. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. So, they're all crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna, and Hosanna means save now, Lord, save now. And so, uh, it's interesting that this is what was happened. It just happened spontaneously, as I mentioned, uh, was the, the simple truth that as God was fulfilling these verses to where he said he would come riding uh, upon an ass, that sure enough, uh, God's word was fulfilled that day as Jesus proved he was the Messiah. And I just want to show you another fascinating verse that I think is very much linked to this event. Look at Ezekiel chapter 48. <clears throat> Someday Jesus is going to come and return, and he's going to rule from Jerusalem, is he not? Right. And so look at the last chapter of Ezekiel, Ezekiel 48. And sure enough, you're going to find in Ezekiel 48, in the verse 35, the last verse 
of Ezekiel. It was around uh, about 8,000 measures, and the name of the city from that day shall be, notice, what, is the, what are they going to call Jerusalem from now on? It's going to be called, the Lord is there. See? Just as sure as here, we see them hollering, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, meaning save now, save now, Lord, save now. But when Jesus comes and reigns for a thousand years, they're going to call that place Jehovah Shammah because they're going to be saying the Lord is there. Amen. Amen. Boy, it's going to be a great day. Amen. It's so awesome. Dr. Ruckman, one day when we were at camp, he was sort of preaching about Jesus and what it was going to be like for us all to go to heaven and when we finally are all in heaven and how we'll all be so excited. Of course we will. Talk about shouting and having a shout mm -hmm. and getting excited. And he was talking about how there will be, you know, maybe you're up there in the grandstands, maybe you're down on the ground. I don't know, but here comes Jesus walking down the street and everybody's going to be hollering and so excited to be pointing at Jesus, their Savior, Jesus who loved them and who they love. And they're going to be pointing at Jesus and he's got to talking and preaching about Jesus and talking about how just think where you're pointing, you're going to be looking at Jesus, you're going to be pointing at Jesus, and at the end of your finger is going to be Jesus. <laughs> and I mean, you could have done my shoelaces and I'd gone to heaven because it was just so exciting to think about how awesome it is going to be when finally we get to see Jesus, the one that saved our soul, the one that we're not worthy of, and there he's got us all with him there in heaven. And we get to be with Jesus and see Jesus. Amen. Amen. It's going to be an exciting moment. <laughs> Amen. It's enough to make a Methodist shout out there. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, Hosanna, amen, in the highest. Amen. And uh, it's going to be an exciting time because Jesus is there. Amen. Amen. God is there. The Lord is there. Jehovah is there. He's going to finally be there, man, because he's come back here. Amen. And so the Bible tells us, uh, let's pick it up here then, that uh, I don't know, uh, Matthew 21, I think I'll start at 10. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved. Now, what's that mean, all the city was moved? That means they were stirred up. <laughs> Saying, who is this? Amen. <laughs> Bunch of owls. Who, who, who? And the multitude said, this is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and said unto them, it is written, my house shall be called the house of prayer. Amen. 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 It's a, he's, he's combining uh, Isaiah 56, 7 with Jeremiah 1, 11. And amen, there's come to come a day that his house is going to be there. It's not there today, but it will be there. And it, would be a, and it will be a house of prayer for all the nations of the world to come and beseech the Lord. And so come quickly, Lord Jesus. Amen. And so Jesus cast out those money changers and their doves. As it's written, my house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. And when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the Son of God. They were sore displeased. <laughs> you can usually spot them, oh, Pharisees, amen, and uh, scribes and hypocrites. Oh, they're mad. Oh, they're sore displeased. And said unto him, Hearest thou what these say? And Jesus saith unto them, Yea, have ye never read? And that's the problem. Yeah, they, they don't know their Bible. They don't know their Bible at all. It's like the average schmuck. I've met so many Christian preachers even. 
And yet you could ask him, can you tell me the first five books of Moses? And you'd be lucky to get that. They're so dumb. Never mind. Just, just tell me the names of the Bible. Just go ahead and give me the names of the Bible. Right. And they, they can't give you no names of nothing. Because they would be afraid they wouldn't get the order right because they don't know the Bible. And yet they claim to be a preacher. What a sad state of affairs we are in today. Amen. <coughs> Have you never read? <laughs> Out of the mouths of babes and sucklings, thou hast perfected praise. And he left them and went out of the city into Bethany. Okay, so that's a good place to stop. Let's pray. Lord, again, thank you for this wonderful passage. We get so excited looking forward to that day when at the end of our fingers there will be Jesus uh, standing, walking, taking the throne, sitting down. Man, we're looking forward to it. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray and amen, amen. So what an exciting moment to be alive, amen. And so we're looking forward to that day. And so the Bible speaks much of this time in the near future when, yes, uh, Jesus will be here. And he'll be ruling and reigning the earth. And it will be a glorious time. Amen. But yet, see, Jesus has got work to do. The Bible makes it plain that when Jesus comes, pretty soon he's coming. There's going to be the rapture of the church, and there's going to be seven years of hell on earth. And it's going to be terrible. And uh, there's going to be pestilence, disease, wars, and rumors of wars. Even the animals, the Bible even teaches that the domestic animals are going to go mad. And they're going to attack their owners. And it's just going to be so much hell on earth and chaos. Never mind when the pits open up and the monsters come out of there and start tormenting men. And they try to kill themselves for five whole months, but they won't die. And that's why people really are getting ready for the time of the zombies. Because the Bible teaches such a thing is going to happen during the seven years of hell on earth. Then finally, if Jesus didn't, wouldn't come back, no flesh would be saved. The whole world would be so full of pollution, so full of water turning to blood, so full of giant hailstones falling out of the sky on fire and setting everything on fire, and a third of the trees burn up and all the green things, and then all the fish dying in the oceans. And never mind how you're going to eat, how you're going to live, how you're going to get a drink of water. It's going to get rough. So much death and dying, so much suffering, and yet men will not repent. They still hold to their idols of wood, silver, and stone. And they won't give up their idolatry. They won't worship the true Lord and the real Lord of the Bible. Until finally, no flesh would be saved, but he's going to finally come back. And yeah. praise God, he comes rolling out of that sky right in that white horse. And buddy, I plan to be riding with him, don't you? And it's going to be a glorious time. And then he's going to finally set up his kingdom on the earth. And he'll rule from Jerusalem. But now as we ride across the sky and we come riding in on that horse getting closer and closer to the ground <laughs> and we ride in over the valley of Jezreel and when finally he sets that horse down on the Mount of Olives and then there's an earthquake and then the mountain lays down flat and fills in the Kidron Valley so that Jesus walks straight into Jerusalem through the eastern gate. And it's going to be a glorious time because he's going to rule the world in righteousness. Amen. Yeah. Finally, there's going to be boys and girls that can even play with their rattlesnakes and with the animals. And the animals are not going to be out to hurt them or be mean to them. They can play in a cockatrice's den. Uh, the lion can now lay down with the lamb and the lamb with a wolf and it's going to be a glorious time. Amen. Uh, but again, but there's so much pollution and junk from that seven years of hell on earth that the Bible says in the last few verses of Daniel that it's going to take the Lord about 41 days to clean up the mess. Mm -hmm. The whole world has been such a mess. So many people have died already on the site of the Temple Mount. Jews and Gentiles and Muslims alike 
that the first thing Jesus will do then when he comes into the city is he'll get that broom, dip it in the holy water, because as we told you, they do have some red heifers there now that they never did have before. But they finally got some red heifers there. And of course, those red heifers will be sacrificed. They'll take those ashes of the red heifer. They'll put it into the water, therefore changing the water, making it into holy water. Then Jesus will take a broom, the besom of destruction, it says. He'll dip it in there, and then he'll sweep down the whole temple site. He'll clean the whole temple site, and then he'll get out his tools, and he'll start rebuilding the temple. Amen. It'll have to be rebuilt. So it's going to take a little while. Daniel implies, yeah, it'll take about 41 days. Mm-hmm. It's going to be wonderful to see Jesus come back. It's going to be wonderful to see the dirt and the clouds and the dirt and destruction and the smells and the stink and the dead body, but to see it slowly getting cleaner and cleaner and cleaner and cleaner until finally, hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus is here. He's cleaned up the place and ain't everything wonderful. Amen. Everything's going back to like it was in the Garden of Eden. It's a paradise on earth. And it's going to be awesome. What is it going to be when Jesus comes walking in that eastern gate? Woo! It's going to be exciting. Amen. Now here the people got a little excited because they could, they could kind of imagine, wow, here's the Messiah. He's real. He's been healing our sick, raising our dead. He's been doing so many wonderful things. The blind now see. The lame now walk. He's coming into Jerusalem. He's been preaching now for three and a half years. This is awesome. They get excited. Hosanna. He's coming into Jerusalem, but he sees these devils there, so he cleans them up. He cleans that out. Cleans out the house of the Lord. Amen. He's got authority. He's the Lord of Sabbath. (laughs) You can't tell him what's holy and what ain't holy. He knows what's holy. And like it says in Hebrews 4, Jesus is our (laughs) Sabbath. He made me holy. Can't the Lord of Sabaoth be the Lord of Sabaoth? Amen. Can you be one of his children? So God's house is to be a place where people are not exploited, but rather their petitions are given to the Lord, and they seek the Lord there and seek his wisdom and seek his word. They ain't a place for making money. Bunch of gas bags. Cheap opportunists. Amen. Always thinking about the almighty buck. See, that's what, again, is such an insult. The All these churches, oh, we're going to be a 501c3. Yeah, that's all you think about. Whose God is your belly. We know who you are. And so God's house is to be a place where people are not exploited. Amen. Amen. It is written. Amen. Verse 12, Jesus said, went into the temple of God, cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the <laughs> tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. Amen. Because right. God's house is supposed to be so much more than a place of business, a place of uh, profit. It's so funny how the word profit sounds like profit. Amen. <laughs> and, and that profits are false prophets because they're only in it for a profit. Right. Yeah. Amen. Mm-hmm. They're not in it for the Lord, you know. And they're false prophets. Amen. They're not able to trust the Lord to pr- make their provision. They got to sell their books, you know, and sell their doves and make change for you. And of course, always click their interest <laughs> like a bank. Never mind who owns the banks. So we see he returned to Jerusalem. Amen? Amen. Uh, He went into the temple. Cast them out. Then, secondly, God's house is to be a house of prayer. Amen? Amen place where their petitions could be made. 
presented before the Lord, and then we be reminded of God's words and God's word to them and God's promises, and said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, that ye have made it a but ye have made it a den of thieves. Amen. What was that old movie made years ago? Uh, somebody in the den of thieves? Abba. Alibaba. Alibaba, that's it. Alibaba. <laughs> somebody says, isn't that a website? No, it's Alibaba. Alibaba in the den of thieves. You know, It's this uh, Arabic story, you know. And yet, yeah. That's what God's house is, mostly in the churches today. You know, they got to sell Bibles. they got to sell your latest book they wrote, you know. God save us mm -hmm. from all these devils. Amen. And yet, what would happen, though? You get everybody in there praising the Lord, celebrating Jesus' presence and the Word of God being true, because ain't He the Word? In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. God's house would be a place of ministry. So what's going to be happening? Well, of course... If Jesus has been healing and, and, and raising the dead, then, of course, there's going to be blind and sick people there, too, in the crowd. So Jesus begins to minister to them. Once he's cleaned the house first, amen, now people can see the power of God and see the Word of God have free reign, amen. amen. And so it's written, My house shall be called the house of prayer. But you've made it a den of thieves. And so, thank the Lord. Amen. It's a place for ministry, isn't it? And so, the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them, of course. Amen. See, now there's no denying if somebody needs to be healed, what better place to be than in the house of the Lord? Amen. Yeah. But yet God's house is really for his people. Right. For his minister to these people to come and minister to one another, to minister the word and to have prayer and beseech the Lord for our needs. It's really the place for the Lord's people. But yet, if someone were in the world and they wanted to come to know the Lord, what better for a place for them to be? Amen. Of course, they should want to attach themselves to somebody that's going to the house of the Lord. Because mm -hmm. they might get saved there. They might recognize God, again, I don't think it's hard to minister. I'm telling you, I'm ministering with a lot of people who've never darkened the doors of a church ever. But yet they are, I find that they are, they have a love for the Lord. I think yeah. like my old buddy, I told you how my old buddy come up with his, his way of saying to people, hey, you love Jesus, don't you? Because most people are going to say, well, sure. And then you say, well, why, why, do you, why do you love Jesus? Of course, that puts them on a spot now. Mm -hmm. Then you said, then you'd let them know. Well, we, we love, I love Jesus because he died for my sins on the cross. Amen. And, you know, it should be real easy to lead them to the Lord. My friend was using this gimmick to lead them to the Lord. Because he would just say, hey, I love the Lord. Do you love the Lord? <coughs> and most people will say yes. But yet you, they could never tell you why. You know. And so then you explain to them how well it, it's easy to love the Lord when you know he's died on the cross for your sins. So you don't have to go to hell now. You don't have to pay for your own sins on the, in, you know, on the... He did that for you when he died for you on the cross and, and he took your hell for you and he rose again the third day proving you can live forever. And I really think that uh, people can be won that way. Because, mm -hmm. uh, as I, again, I'm ministering to a lot of people who don't go to church, aren't in church, but yet when we say, well, we're praying for your daddy, we hate to hear that bee stung him and he's in the hospital. We hate, but well, we're praying for your little daughter. One of my workmates has a daughter. She's concerned for her because, of course, she's special needs and, and she's uh, got some major health issues uh, and trouble in her legs and things, and she's a teenager. And it, I can tell it means a lot to them when I tell them, well, we're praying for you. I'm, I've got my church praying for you. See, I think they're reachable. She stopped me. We had a meeting recently. She stopped me to make sure she had my number and Joyce's phone number. So I gave her a number. Then sure enough, she texted us this week. And she was just so happy. You could tell to have our names on the list as she texts all of us so that we can just stay in touch with one another. You know? oh, and she acknowledged me right away. She let everybody know that this is Dan that's <laughs> responded. And 
it means a lot. Because like another one of our workmates is an alcoholic. <coughs> now, of course, they're sober when they're working, but, you know, they live the lifestyle they want to live. Yeah. And uh, it's sad. Mm -hmm. It's sad because when we're sitting and eating together or something, that these people so freely talk about their liquor and stuff, mm -hmm. but that's their life and their lifestyle. Right. But you can tell they have a whole lot of respect for us because mm -hmm. we don't participate in those type of things. And so Amen. we're able to reach them for the Lord. Amen. And so what an opportunity we have. So let's Amen. stay true to the Lord. Let's be honest and be there to minister like the Lord did even in his own house. Amen. So that now these blind could be healed and have sight and the lame could walk. <laughs> you see that guy taking off, man. He's happy. He's got strength in his legs. He can walk. He, he couldn't walk before. Right. How exciting in the temple that day it had to be for all these people. So, of course, what would the kids start doing? They're going to start singing. Man, the kids are going to clap their hands and start singing whatever gospel songs they know. You know, most of the time, even when I'm on the bus and got the radio going real quietly, I'm over there in my driver's seat just singing to the Lord, having a good time. <laughs> because, you know, when you got a song, you got to sing it. Amen. Amen. And so we see, sure enough, you know, the people are there again. They've had this triumphal entry and they come in and, and set branches down before the Lord and their clothes down before the Lord. And you got all these children singing. And you can imagine what it would be like because the kids are used to school and they're used to singing and singing the songs. And they've known, they've memorized a lot of Bible, a lot of Old Testament psalms and stuff. So they start singing. God's house to be a place where wonderful things are done. Amen. And they're singing. And yet the chief priests and scribes, see the place kind of, the people kind of run into place. It makes them mad. See? A little bit too much excitement here. Praising the Lord. People getting excited for God. People magnifying the Lord and magnifying his word. People magnifying Jesus, the son of God. Oops. <laughs> like there's only one God and he's, he's an absolute God. And he spoke absolutely. Amen. See, this, is, this is the number one problem that people just don't have a grasp. See, they don't, they don't see this God as being that miraculous that they serve. He's just a God of, well, we're hoping we got the right manuscripts. Right. You know. Believe you me, like Paul said, there's another Jesus being preached, but buddy, he's not the same one that John believed in. That in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. <coughs> see, they don't see him as an absolute God. They're just trying to find him. Right. They're trying to feel after him. They don't have any concept of this God being real and a real God in their lives. And for sure they doubt if he was their creator. <coughs> And so, hallelujah, mighty, these kids are excited. They're singing. Now, I'm looking forward to that day. Again, I can't, understand, I can't comprehend it all, I, 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 but I do believe it all. You know, the Bible says it in this terrible time that's coming when Satan's son takes over the world, a third of all the water turned to blood. Isn't it wild? And yet, even today, finally, I mean, for centuries, so, uh, you know, many of us have lived a long time, and we didn't know of anything turning into blood, but yet today... Uh, we've some of us have seen the pictures where yes there are some rivers in Europe that are starting to run red there's some in India that have turned red there's all kinds of strange phenomena there's been blood come out of the sky and they've tested it and said yeah it's human blood we don't know where it's coming from and why it's falling but it's out here well <laughs> this day was predicted and so this day's coming when Jesus does come back won't it be glorious when we got these animals all tame now and the kids can play with them and there's no danger anymore, even among the animals. Isaiah 55, verse 12, For ye shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. And because I know this verse and I believe this verse, I can't tell you again what a surprise it was for me that I'm out there 
fooling with my bees a couple springs ago, and all of a sudden I look down there and I see that leaf lying there on the ground doing sit-ups, you know. I see that leaf down there at my feet doing sit-ups, and I say, what in the world is this? How is this possible? What is happening that this leaf is doing sit-ups? And so I get down on my hands and knees. I look all the way around it. I say, what in the world? Is there a, a little inchworm underneath there somewhere? Is there a caterpillar? Is there a spider just got a thread of a web pulling on this? Why, how is this leaf bending in the middle, raising itself up, laying itself back down? And finally, I just can't, I have to test it to see what's going on here, you know. Prove all things, Paul told me. Right. So I finally pick it up, and as soon as I pick it up, it just lays down, and it never sits up again. <laughs> and I turn it over and look at it and say, how is this possible? Well, I don't know, but I believe the Bible, and there's a whole lot more to a tree than a tree. <laughs> it's more than just chemicals and a reaction of chemicals and uh, protoplasm and chlorophyll and all the other things they say it is. You know, I know you can take a, a, a large uh, a bell stethoscope and put it up to the tree and you can hear it, you can hear it talking. Because again, there's, there's water traveling up to the leaves. And every one of them trees that you may not hear it, but if you had a stethoscope and set it up against the bark, you'll hear every one of those trees He's singing now. You know, one may be a tenor, one may be a bass. But they're, they're, they're making sounds even now. And I believe God. And I believe they'll get excited when Jesus comes back. And that even if they were to tell these children, quit saying that, well, that the rocks would cry out. Amen? Amen. Because the Bible says so. And do you believe God? Amen. Yeah. Do you believe God's house should be a house of prayer? Amen. Amen. Where people get their prayers answered. Amen. People get themselves encouraged in the Lord and healed in Jesus' name. Amen. And so God's house should be a place where wonderful things are done. And there should be some singing. Amen. Amen. Like it says in Hebrews too, where he's down singing with his congregation, amen, in the church. The Lord's there singing, amen. So the, oh, the chiefs, chiefs, priests, and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did and the children crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the Son of God, to, to the Son of David, and they were sore displeased. And said unto him, Hearest thou what these say? See? <laughs> They're not saying what they want to hear. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. They're not saying what they want to hear. Right. He, they wanted to hear him say, oh, oh, well, we brought a great offering for you, chief priests and scribes. Well, they'd like to hear that. You know. Mm -hmm. Who can give $100? Who can give uh, $200? <laughs> we, yes. We've seen these clown church shows yep. where they're trying to take up an offering. Yeah. Taking up all your time. Yep. You pay him just to shut up. Pay him just to shut up. That's about it, ain't it? Because, see, it's not what they want to hear. And that's, that's what's going on here. They don't, they don't want to hear this. So they're trying to give a subtle backslap to Jesus, see. And said unto him, Hearest thou what these say? And Jesus saith unto them. See, they're, they're, in other words, they're putting it back on Jesus, putting him to the test. See Jesus in the picture here, uh, healing this crippled man. He's come up, he's got his little crutches under him. Jesus' house would be a place where Christ is praised. Children praised him. Some objected. But Christ commanded the children to go ahead and keep praising him because the Bible says so. Oh, amen. Uh-oh, back to being a radical, stick in the mud, stick in the mud Bible believer, Amen. Jesus said to them, Yea, have ye not read? And that's the problem. No, they haven't read. They don't know their book. 
out of the mouths of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise. And it's so important that you get this right now. Notice it didn't say uh, we've got a perfect a song service with perfect music. Because practice makes perfect. Isn't that what they say? Right. Practice makes perfect. Mm -hmm. And and then it was isn't the verse Jesus is quoting, have you never have you never read, out of the mouths of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise. See, praise has to be perfected. Yeah. You have to keep singing and have to keep practicing it in order for it to get more perfected. <laughs> He gave us the Bible. Why? That the man of God may be perfect. Duly furnished in the good works. What do you mean? How can you be perfect? What about you should be perfect? Perfect what? Faith. Perfect faith and a perfect love. Amen. Those are the two things that you can have perfectly. But it depends on how much they're practiced. Amen. You start with a little faith and a little love and you continue to grow it by faith and by reading the word and being sanctified by the word of God in prayer. Amen? Amen. So that it can be more and more perfected so that you can more and more conform to the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, he's quoting Psalms 8 and verse 2. Let's look at Psalms 8 and verse 2 and we'll be done. Amen. Psalms 8 and verse 2. Let's see how David put it here. Psalms 8 and verse 2. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him? And the Son of Man that thou visitest him, for thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth through the paths of the seas. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Amen. <laughs> amen and amen. All right, let's all stand and bow our heads in prayer. Again, Lord, we're so thankful. And we just want to honor you for all the wonderful things, Lord, all the wonders that you have performed to think that you'd come down among men and heal them of their many sicknesses and diseases. And so, Lord, again, we just want to be everything the Bible tells us to be, as old stick-in-the-mud Bible-believing Christians who believe that our Lord, our God, is, a, is, is the Lord. And, Father, that uh, you're the God of the Bible, that you're the God of absolutes, and that when you have spoken to us, you've spoken absolutely. Help us, Lord, to properly acknowledge uh, your place as a house of prayer that we can be your people and be your house and do what we can to bring more uh, from the darkness of the devil into the kingdom of your dear son and into the family of God. So help us, Lord, as we try our best to reach these folks in Jesus' name. Amen.